and today we're taking a look at how to replace your vehicle's tie rod. So you notice some recent noises in your vehicle lately and you know it's coming from the front end of your vehicle and you even notice that it's driving funny and inspecting your vehicle you notice that the tie rod is bad. In my case I got that 3 to 9 o'clock movement. I knew right away it was the inner tie rod. The first thing you want to do the day before is apply some grease to the bolts and nuts that we're going to unscrew. That's going to make the job a lot easier. And this is the things that we're going to need. A tarp, jack stands, a jack, some thread locker a needle nose plier, some wrenches, cutting pliers, wrench sockets, extension bars, adjustable wrench, breaker bar, your socket wrench, flathead screwdriver, a hammer, preferably rubber sledgehammer. If using a hammer, a sledgehammer, you can always use a piece of wood to soften the blow. Sip ties, a one quarter socket wrench, a line wrench. If you're working in the inner tie rod, then you would need the inner tie rod tool. I got this one under $20 in AutoZone. And most importantly, your tie rod and included grease. Always remember that safety is the most important thing. That's why the first thing that we're gonna do is place the emergency brakes on the vehicle. And second, place our block stop on the rear tire. Now, before we raise the car, we wanna loosen the bolt of the tire. Now we want to race the car and place it in jack stands. Now we go ahead and remove the wheel. And always remember to have your nuts all together in one place. That would avoid you a headache in the future. For added security, I like to place the wheel under the vehicle and also leave the jack in case the jack stands fail. Because the last thing you want in a beautiful sunny weekend is to die. Let's now rotate the wheels to the opposite side where you're working at. We're going to start by removing the bolt from the outer tie rod. And this is where your breaker bar is going to come in handy and always remember lefty loosey righty tighty once you get your first break it's going to be easier after that and you can start using your regular socket wrench now we're going to take the adjustable wrench and break the middle nut on the tie rod bar and we're only going to do a quarter of a turn because this is the nut that ensures your car's alignment and we only want to loosen it to be able to take out the outer tie rod now we want to remove the three clamps on the boot and these pressure clamps are easy to take off with some pliers we have one on the outside part of the boot and we have another one located in the inside part of the vehicle which is holding a small line and the other one is holding the boot and that one you could use a flathead screwdriver to clip it off in our case ours had a zip tie so we only use the cutting pliers to take it off and that's what we're going to use today sometimes the boot could be stuck in there so we're going to use some w40 and a flathead screwdriver to get grease inside the boot and that's going to make it a lot easier for you to take out now you Using your hammer, you want to hit the metal part of the arm without hitting the outer tie rod with the hammer. And what that's going to do is loosen that screw for you. Don't be scared to whack it a couple of times. The only thing you don't want to do is hit the tie rod. In this case, I use a piece of wood to soften the blow because the last thing you want is to spend more money buying another replacement part. And this is where your rubber mallet comes to play. Once you get it loose, you could top it from the bottom and it would come out right out. As you can see, the inner tie rod is worn out. Now we're going to move the boot to expose the ball joint of the inner tie rod. And we want to do that so we can measure the distance from the outer tie rod to the ball joint. And we do that to have the closest measurement. So when we place the new tie rod where it would be close to alignment, but not dangerous to drive, even though when working on the tie rod, it is recommended to align the car after replacing them. So you do want to write that number down and to double check that measurement, we're also going to count the amount of turns it takes us to remove the outer tie rod because we're going to use that when placing the tie rod back to have the closest alignment possible. Let's go ahead and remove the outer tie rod. If you're only replacing the outer tie rod, now you could go ahead and place the newer tie rod and then from there do all the steps backwards. So now we're going to go ahead and take out the nut and the pressure clamp and the boot. Now let's go ahead and place the inner tie rod removal tool on the tie rod. And this removal tool works by tightening both nuts on each side of the tool to clamp on the inner tie rod ball. So then you could place your socket wrench and twist it off. It works similar to the ones used in pipes and tubes. Let's go ahead and place the extension bars on the removal tool to break this sucker loose. Once you break it loose, you can remove the tool and start twisting the inner tie rod with your hand. 
don't forget not to lose the washer. Once we have the treads clean, now we could use the grease packet that came with the inner tie rod to grease the ball head. And we want to go ahead and pack it real tight. Now you want to place the thread locker on the threads of the inner thigh rod. And remember to place your washer back. Let's go ahead and install the new tie rod. And we're also going to use the removal tool to tighten the tie rod. Place your zip tie on the inner part of your boot or your new clamp. Let's go ahead and push the boot inside. Tighten and cut our zip tie and place our both pressure clamps back. One in the tube and one in the outer part. Remember to measure the distance from the ball to where you're going to place the tie rod nut. And also count the turns of your outer tie rod to get your best alignment. Now you won't need the hammer to put the outer tie rod back. You can just wiggle it and move it around until you get it in. Once you screw the nut, the pressure, it's going to bring it back to place. In our case, the screw turns, so we hold it in place with the socket wrench and we turn it with our line wrench. Now you can place your tire back, place your steering wheel back to center and verify that both front tires are basically looking to the same place. Now you could go ahead and take that car for an alignment, pat yourself in the back and have a few cold ones and I mean some ice cold sodas. If you like the video give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions place them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow us on social media. Thank you for watching and here's a clip of our last video.